Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a very simple question? If it is illegal or a campaign finance violation to to solicit information from a foreign government, and this is one liberal publication, but Don Jr.'s eagerness to accept dirt said to be coming from a foreign government was viewed as scandalous, and some legal experts even argued it was criminal since it's a violation of campaign finance law for a campaign to accept or even solicit a, quote, thing of value from a foreign source. How is Clinton not charged under campaign finance violations? Just wondering. This is actually, with the Steele dossier, is just one of the many reasons I wrote in the Daily Caller, what, like two years ago, Hillary Clinton should be charged under campaign finance violations. If you just look at one of my articles here, Hillary Clinton should be indicted for breaking campaign finance laws. This is November 1st, 2017. It's an op-ed in the Daily Caller. And I explain not just the Steele dossier. I explain, my God, I mean just the funneling of money from state Democratic parties into the foundation. I mean, with the extension of the Democrat of her campaign, it's my extension. Her campaign and correct the record were basically one: you had political action committees serving as essentially an arm of her campaign, which is illegal. Priorities USA. I explain everything. You had the same thing that. Um, Dinesh D'Souza was charged with, on a much, on a grandiose scale with Clinton, tens of millions of dollars in straw man donations. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. But campaign, then you have with campaign finance violations, you have with AOC, you have two uh, corporations, you have a, a political action committee that are wonderful YouTube. Uh, progressive, you, a couple of the wonderful progressive YouTube pundits helped start. That, that political action committee funneling money into two corporations. AOC was on the board of the pol- political action committee, and the money was funneled on her behalf by her campaign. We can go on forever, but they're saying that, well, accepting dirt from a foreign foreign entity is a campaign finance violation. Um, okay, then when does Clinton, when does the Golden Mumu get charged for this? When does Madam Cyberhack get charged for this? The difference here, ladies and gentlemen, is that they are accusing President Trump of everything they've done, and they're petrified that he'll do the same to them, but he's already done the same. And worse, in terms of finding out their criminal behavior. Trump didn't need to purchase a dossier. They did. Now, just had, you know, dinner right now. Asked the waitress. We were talking. The waitress uh, actually likes Trump. And I spoke about the Steele dossier. She didn't know what the Steele dossier was. Most Americans don't. They don't know that Clinton purchased the Steele dossier with help from Russian sources. They have no clue. They have no clue that the dossier was funneled. Money to pay for the dossier was funneled through Clinton's law firm. They don't get it. They don't ca- they haven't been told this. Even people who support Trump, most Americans don't know this. All you have to do is this is a wonderful Vanity Fair article. How ex spy Christopher Steele compiled his dossier, his Trump Russia dossier, the man behind the infamous dossier that raises the possibility that Donald Trump may may be vulnerable to Kremlin blackmail. Again, they're they're the ones who Uranium One gave money into the Clinton Foundation, and then miraculously, and then Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin, and miraculously, miraculously, just a coincidence, 20% of U.S. uranium capacity, that business transaction was not vetoed by President Obama. So they're talking about leverage. Oh my God, they're going to have leverage over Trump. No, Russian lobbyists were bragging about their leverage over, over President Obama and Hillary Clinton. Madam Cyberhack. She had, (laughs) she used servers outside of the United States government where she transferred top secret and special access program intelligence onto these servers. But here, you want to talk about a thing of value.
Source B. Look, this is exactly, and Paul Sperry talks about President Trump is already getting information from the Ukraine about Biden. He's already, and I explained in my last segment, he's already getting information from Theresa May, almost certainly Theresa May, but contacts within the British government, within the UK, regarding all the illegal behavior of Peter Strzok when he went there. Peter Strzok flew to London. John O'Brien had activity in London where he might have they say he might have even broken laws. This is a Wall Street Journal article I quote in my last segment, where it is against the law for, for the CIA to, to conduct business on British soil. But John O'Brien almost certainly did that. But here, how good were the sources? This is the this is the actual dossier that was purchased by Clinton. How good were these sources? Consider what Steele would write in the memos he he filed with Simpson. Source A, to use careful nomenclature of his dossier, was a, quote, a senior Russian foreign ministry figure. Excuse me? Excuse me? Clinton is able to purchase a dossier that had, had one source, a senior Russian ministry figure, just because she funneled money through her law firm and then her law firm purchased the dossier. But they used her money. Source B was a, quote, a former top-level officer still active in the Kremlin. Excuse me, Source B, a former top-level officer still active in the Kremlin. Excuse me. So we're worried now about George Stephanopoulos and others are worried now about uh, foreign influence in our election. And I know, like, he brings up the Steele dossier, but he doesn't, there are so many things to kind of expose and unveil. and It's like he can't really harp on it. But media, Democrats, the propaganda machine in general They go from failed propaganda, ploy, stunt, spin, to failed propaganda, ploy, stunt, and spin, and they don't stop. And it is messing with people's minds. Not my mind, not your mind. Our brains are intact. The the issue here is that Trump supporters and independents and progressives who understand what's going on or at least people who uh, people who understand what's going on don't need to hold on to these myths. They don't need to hold on to the myths. People who lost to Trump need to believe that James Comey was virtuous. They literally believe that John Brennan and James Comey and Peter Strzok were virtuous. They view Peter Strzok when he said, we will stop Trump as political chatter. They don't see it as bias. If the reverse were true, um, my God. But there's already information that Trump is obtaining from the Ukraine regarding Joe Biden. There's already information that John Durham and William Barr are obtaining regarding the Russian sources or the Steele dossier, Christopher Steele. I mean, would that be a foreign source? So, dirt derived by Clinton. So, if Clinton commits crimes, and if Brennan and Clapper and Strzok and McCabe and all of them commit crimes on behalf of Clinton, and they set up this grandiose endeavor, this plot, and Trump asks questions, and he receives answers, oh, yeah, by the way, they set you up, they framed you. That's dirt. He's supposed to run to Christopher Wray? What is this? What kind of what kind of mindset is this? This is so ridiculous. I was told today by a very intelligent, extremely intelligent human being. Well, Trump should should go and tell the FBI director. But what if the FBI director is James Comey? Well, he has to. It's it, it's it's illegal. No, it's not. Why didn't Clinton get indicted? I mean, forget about the fact that she transferred. That she not only mishandled. She removed classified information, top secret, and SAP intel outside of the United States government. Why didn't why didn't they go after uh, the Golden Moo for um, 
for deriving information of worth. I thought that's a campaign finance violation, isn't it? I wrote about that, the Steele dossier being a campaign finance violation in the Daily Caller in 2017. You can look up my name on Google, H.A. Goodman, The Daily Caller. I have, I've been published in The Daily Caller. I'm very honored to have a whole bunch of articles in The Federalist. My most recent one was shared by Rush Limbaugh, published in the Jerusalem Post, the Times of Israel. When I was on the left, I was published in the Huffington Post, the Hill Salon. People say, why are you bragging? I'm not, no, I'm not just giving you what I've done. You're listening for a reason, so I'm just giving you some things that I've done. And both of these insiders, after, quote, speaking to a trusted compatriot, would claim that the Kremlin had spent years getting its hooks into Donald Trump. Oh, his, its hooks. Oh, but not, but not Clinton, don't you know? Every single thing. Every single thing. They accuse Trump of being and doing and representing. They themselves have done. Um, they themselves represent. They themselves are. All they do in life is project because they have nothing. See, Trump has a value system. Trump, his he's not a hate-filled person. They just they look at they look at his wall and they say this represents X Y Z. Every uh, you know hate-filled adjective. They have to paint a caricature of Trump because they cannot they cannot logically and rationally oppose just what he the policies he wants. If, he, if, he, if they were to oppose the policies he wants through rational dialogue, they would lose ground. They would lose arguments. They might win some arguments. They might lose some arguments. But they, they wouldn't create this aura of fear and hysteria. They need that. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the President Trump's going to win. I'll say it once, and I'll just leave it at that. Hillary Clinton is going to run again for president in 2020. It could be in October. We have, what, July, August, September, October, November. Five months from now, or it could be tomorrow, but she's running. The golden moo will levitate above the DNC. It'll be like the bat signal for um, disgruntled, deranged imbeciles, liberals. And they'll be like, oh, golden moo we love you. Don't let Russia. We we can't let Russia interfere anymore. They and I love they, they talk about interference. They interfered in the election. They lost. They they're so inept. They can't even be corrupt. They can't even succeed at corruption. Do you realize where they're at now? The Democrats are so inept. They're so clueless. They're so essentially so pathetic that they fail at corruption. All of this is being unveiled. There's a Durham probe. There's William Barr, who who not only is engaging in a Durham probe, John Durham, but he has other probes that are almost certainly ongoing, started even before President Trump came into office. There's an IRS probe regarding the Clinton Foundation that continues on forever. There are Clinton Foundation issues. Um, we can go on forever, but all of this, just from the reporting of Dan Bongino, of Sarah Carter, Kimberly Strassel, Paul Sperry, John Solomon is at the forefront of all this. Tom Fitton is at the forefront of all this. Judicial Watch, Joe DeGeneva, Victoria Tenzing. I've done some some nice work. There's 10 people right there. Black conservative patriot. 11 men. His, his segments are all-encompassing. You get the full aggregate, the, the bird's eye view. You get everything. Black conservative patriot needs to be at a million subs. That's 11 people right there. And then you have voices of sanity. 
that that don't necessarily focus on this, but if you listen to them, you they're the voices of sanity. Stick Sex and Hammer, Tim Pool, HB. There's there's a whole there's a, a bunch of people that you can listen to and be like, okay, you know what? This okay, this media hysteria on the left now is exactly where the the Republican Party was from 2004 until 2008. The Republican Party and media, the prevailing mentality in American politics was far more conservative, far more conservative from 2004, roughly around 2003 to 2004. 2004 started getting... Republicans and and media, even though media had a liberal bias, even back then, obviously, but they still had this judgmental um, aura of condemnation. They utilized religion. They had a very warped view of patriotism. The Bush-era Republicans... And the media around them from 2004 to 2008 had this this thing going on where they were in control of the media message, the media narrative, and it was, it didn't last. It didn't last. They thought they had the prevailing pulse of, of society, and I can't really talk too much about, I mean, there's YouTube policies, there's an algorithm, I can't go into everything, but... That paradigm of thought didn't didn't work. Then there was a different type of paradigm of thought, but it was the the President Obama's years, especially towards the end of pe- President Obama's administration, the media became an extension of the Democratic Party, more so than even when it was an extension of the Bush administration. And then when when Trump won, it was a repudiation. It was a a sea change within the paradigm, and they were all running scared. So the me- what the media did is they said, well, let's amplify the loudest, zaniest, most bizarre voices on the left, far left, way left. I'm talking make- making AOC look like Margaret Thatcher left. Let's amplify those voices, and so now you have this this (laughs) fantasy world that they've come up with where the media now says, well, look, you have the far-left voices, and then you have this pseudo-intellectual version of patriotism now which says that national security and your, your future as a country even though the economy is fantastic, even though President Trump, from the stand, the standard by which you would judge a president, is doing a great job. You have a media now that says, well, patriotism is everything. You have to oppose Trump. You have to oppose Trump. You, you must. And he's so corrupt. What did he do? Well, he's accused of so much. Well, what did he do? Well, he's accused of so much. Don't you know? What did he do? He is accused of so much. And when he was accused, he didn't acquiesce. In fact, he obstructed a two-year investigation that found nothing. In fact, there was not sufficient evidence to charge any campaign of official as, as as an unregistered agent of the Russian government, and even with the DNC emails, the Mueller, Mueller report says there was not it was not sufficient to charge a criminal campaign vi- finance violation. Nothing. And then they say, then they write, the evidence was not sufficient to charge that any member of the Trump campaign conspired with representatives of the Russian government to interfere in the 2016 election. They're trying to make it a morally relative kind of, well, you know, he couldn't really charge Clinton because you can't prove all those, she did all those things. No, you can prove intent. That was easy. She committed crimes. With Trump, not only was there no intent, there were no crimes committed, but there were a whole lot of things that people say uh, possibly took place. And they accepted information of value. 
But the media now, this hysteria is not sustainable. Just like the, the world under Bush wasn't sustainable, this new world under this bizarre, you know, pseudo-intellectual um, elevation of all the, all the just weirdest voices that are now amplified beyond belief, where you look and you say, "What? How did they? How did they get this? How did they? They twist Trump's quotes. Everything is twisted. Everything is is mangled. Everything is the the, the sensibilities now are so far left that you you just. I know I'm kind of being vague, but I have to be vague. You literally say certain things like, "Oh, big problem," but this is not about the biggest issues in America. The United States of America is the the only goal of the intelligence community is to keep Americans safe from you know what, the threats we face, all the different threats that I can't even name. But that has to deal with protecting American lives. None of this has to do with protecting you or me or any other American. None of this has to do with protecting any of our lives. This has only to do with protecting the Democratic Party. He he ex- he wants to he wants to accept dirt on Hillary. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. And then Politico: Trump smashed months of FBI work to thwart election interference. They didn't even interfere in the election the first time. Knowing about pre- knowing about uh, Bernie Sanders being cheated, and he was cheated. Knowing about Bernie Sanders being cheated is a good thing. It's a good thing. We don't even know if the DNC was even hacked. We're relying on CrowdStrike, another thing that, another entity that zero, nobody, almost nobody knows. Everything, they were outsourced by Clinton. The Steele dossier was purchased by Clinton. And so, it's, this is Vox. It says, oh, it's a violation of campaign finance law to accept or even solicit a thing of value. Then why isn't Clinton uh, charged for the Steele dossier? Because Trump didn't accept this, any, any dossier. They did. And then Paul Sperry, why would Trump rule out listening to Apple research from foreign sources when Ukraine has so much dirt on Biden and his son? And Democratic opponent, Democrat opponents of Biden going to turn down? Are Democrats going to turn that down? Of course not. Uh, they're, take, they're, ta- they're taking it and they're already starting to deploy it against Biden. So, yeah. And John Durham is already looking into John O'Brien's role in all of this. These people don't even know how to wield power. That's why not only Trump won, that's why he'll get reelected. And they're now the spinning plates. I kept talking about Clinton and, and the spinning plates. Well, this is like a long time ago when uh, before McCabe and before James Baker and before all, all of them were either under criminal investigation or fired or exposed. Clinton has a lot of... Sp- uh, the, the, the golden moo Madam Cyberhack, has a lot of spinning plates. Some of them have already crashed down and, and broken apart, and some of them now are wobbly. But when the election takes place, there's no... <laughs> they're not going to be able... like. Democrats, liberals, the media will have to come to terms with the fact that they were an extension of Bubba Bill. What's up? That's what I'm talking about. They were all an extension of two people. And it happens. They're political dynasties. People say, oh, Clinton is not even... No. It's still... And when she she's... The Golden Mumu is not only running the show... But she is, they are so powerful that they don't, that most of the people on the left don't realize that they're running the show. (laughs) The average leftist, the average liberal, the average progressive, the average Democrat doesn't realize that they're an extension. That's what I'm talking about. They're, They're an extension of me. A direct link to Bubba Bill and to Madam Cyberhack. They essentially run the show, the media, everything. Who benefits from this? Certainly not <laughs> Kristen Gillenbrand. Certainly not Bernie Sanders. But it does benefit the Golden Moo. Give me your thoughts below. Um, what 
This is hilarious. They already accepted information. President Trump is already accepting information. He's already accepting information from the Ukraine and the UK. He's already accepting dirt on on Clinton. There's absolutely nothing they can do about it because they've done worse. And if it's a campaign finance violation for Trump, they the FEC should go after them first. I'm still waiting for the FEC to look into, oh, I don't know, how the wonderful progressives against dark money funneled uh, millions into two corporations. That's interesting from um, a wonderful political action committee on the left. Oh, they're so wonderful. Give me your thoughts below. If you want to support my voice long term, your support is greatly appreciated, especially in this time of, of just you know, craziness. I've been able to, to bypass any type of nonsense because I play the long game and I'm really, really cautious. But your support via my Patreon link is greatly appreciated, especially if you enjoy my voice. Um, check out my writing in, in the Federalist that was shared by Rush Lumbaugh. That's below. Thank you so much, everyone.